Hi, I'm Lowell Martin, and welcome to MCC Today. On today's show, we have Kelly McKee, Stacy Parks, and Jesse Beckman. You're going to learn a lot. Viewer discretion advised. Find purpose and soar to new heights at Meridian Community College. Elevate your education through our 52 career technical programs and find the eagle in you. With tuition guarantee and university transfer programs, your education is within reach. Find potential with more than 30 campus clubs and organizations and let your eagle spirit thrive. Invest in your education and register today. Meridian Community College, find your wings. Today we are lucky enough to have Ms. Stacy Parks, who is the QEP Assessment and Assessments Coordinator. I never say that right, I'm so <laughs> sorry. And you are basically in charge of what we call the Computer Connections Lab That's in right. Montgomery Hall, which Montgomery Hall is the building that has the cafeteria in it. Because right. my, my lab, my success center, is directly across the hall from yours. Right, okay, you're but my neighbor. <laughs> I'm, I'm your neighbor and have been for a few years right. now. Um, what does the Computer Connections Lab do? Okay, well, we typically see two types of students. Okay. So the first type of student um, is those who need basic computer skills help, right? So they come to me, and some of these students, maybe they've been out of school for 20 years, mm -hmm. and they, um, I'm not sure how to save a file, or they may say, I'm not sure how to locate a saved file. Um, I don't know how to save a file to a certain drive because okay. um, a lot of our instructors want them to save files a certain I don't way know how to, to a save certain it drive. PDF or right, a word. let's convert a Word document to a PDF. I'm not sure how to email my instructor, okay. or maybe I know how to email, but I don't know how to email an attachment. Okay, um, maybe I don't know how to submit an assignment in Canvas, which is our learning management software here on campus. Um, also. Maybe they don't know how to embed a photo or create a hyperlink. Okay. Um, sometimes these students also will say, I need to do a research paper, but I don't really know how to use Google, or I don't know how to use the library's website to research and come up with you know, a proper research document that could be used in, let's say, an English paper or history okay. paper. So it's just a variety, just a big variety of things that were the, what we would call basic computer skills. So if they're, if they're having one of these issues, then they just come in and right. see you. Do they need to make an appointment? Or they do, do they, not. Can they just walk in? They can walk in. I do tell students, if you want to make sure that I'm there, you are welcome to make an appointment because I do have a lot of meetings around campus, so sometimes they'll miss me if they drop by. But hopefully, most of the time I'm there, you know, okay. have an occasional meeting. Um, so for a student yeah. who's, who's nervous about coming to school yes. because they, they don't think that their yes. computer skills are up to par, we have something in place yes. to help them. That's We're right. not just going to throw them into the deep end and right. say, okay, swim <laughs> right. with the sharks. Right. We have someone there to help them. Right. Okay, and so all, all they need to do is just run by right. to see you. Now, now this started, this uh, uh, computer connections lab, because I remember it because I've been here 40 million years. <laughs> that it used to be the QEP lab, right. which is our quality enhancement plan. That's correct. Okay. It came as a result of that, okay. finding a need. Okay. You know, our students, it was determined that there was a need for um, computer skills tutoring. Okay. And that's how the lab came about. And that was the end of a five-year program right. that we had this lab right. <laughs> because we determined that this was a need in, in, right. in our community. Right. And then since then, we have kept we the continue. lab going. Right. Okay. Now, in addition to uh, um, the Computer Connections Lab, well, and, well and one other thing that you said, do you do Excel documents? Yeah, so the I know second, a lot of yes, people who come in and right, like, I have no yes. idea how to do an so Excel that, document. So that first, I was going to say there's two types of students that see me. The first type, all about they need basic computer skills help. The second type of student are students enrolled in computer courses. Okay. So we have um, some academic students that take a computer concepts course. That's a very common course. 
and that goes through Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Access. Okay. So those students come to me for help with their homework, right? Okay. But <laughs> so, you give them help with right, their homework. Right. So I, I help mean, with their homework. So they, they use a software called SAMS in that course. Okay. Then we have our students on the vocational side, or what we call our career and technical. Those students um, typically are majoring in business and office management technology. They do more advanced Word, advanced okay. Excel, okay. PowerPoint, Access, um, word processing. They use a software called GDP. Okay. So I help, so I can help those students with that software, learning to navigate that software in addition to just learning how to use Microsoft Office products. Okay. It's very valuable because really most is. of our workplaces, right, they want you to know Microsoft Office Suite. And so. as an aside, one of the, the, the oldest student I've ever had was a, a woman who was in her 80s taking oh a Comp goodness. 1 class, an English Comp 1 class. And the biggest argument we had, because all of our papers are submitted online, right. submitted online, <laughs> submitted online. She wouldn't do it. She's like, I don't know. I, I, I've got to write it with pencil. And it, that was our biggest. And then, <laughs> right. in all honesty, I said, okay, what are you, are you getting this for a degree? And she said, I am 84 years old. I am not going to get a degree. And I said, <laughs> Write your paper. I, just, right. just write it. I'm not going to deal right. with, with this. But students who are thinking about making a change, students right. who are thinking, you know, and they they're concerned with, oh, because the computer can be frightening for many people Very if you haven't grown so. up with it. Right. And so we you're there right. to help them navigate. Yes, whether this. it be basic computer skills or advanced Excel, they okay. can come to our lab for help. And what are the hours typically? So I'm there um, 8 o'clock to 4.30 Monday through Thursday, 8 to 3.30 on Fridays. Okay. Or they can make an appointment um, located, okay. like you said, in Montgomery. Okay. It's above the cafeteria, second floor, room 204. Okay. Um, What's your, the phone number to Okay, allow? yeah, they can call me 601-581-3580. Okay, so, so if they want to call and just right, make sure they can and call schedule make an, an appointment. appointment, make sure I'm not going to a meeting when they come by, that would be great. Okay, so. and you also, you said you do the assessment. Part, okay, right. which is another part of your job. Right. What does that entail? So, yeah, so because this arose from the QEP, this came about through the QEP, um, it started, we did basic computer skills testing, right? right? And we did an intermediate English courses, um, were selected in our study skills courses, right. were selected. So I give a basic computer skills test. And, um, Which we still give it. We still give it, right? And it's just a way to give students feedback. If they okay. score below a certain amount, hey, I might need tutoring, right? Okay. Also, a lot of times instructors refer students to me. Mm -hmm. They may say, in, a, in another course that's not tested, they could come and say, you need to go see <laughs> Stacy Parks because you need a little help. Well, we have more and more students taking classes online, yes. and I think this can be can be beneficial yes. to them if they if they say, "Look, I want to get an education. Right. I want it to, you know, but my schedule, I have to take online, right. and so they can come to you right. and get that additional help." Right, they need that face to face. Right, sometimes, sometimes. so they come to me. Okay, um, and I work with a lot of the online instructors, you know, trying to figure out what they want. Sure. Right. Sure. So what they want the students to know, so I can help them navigate with their online instructors. Listen, uh, Ms. Parks, thank you so much for yes. being here today, and I hope you come back. Thank you for inviting me. We'll be right back. Meridian Community College Arts and Letters Series is proud to present Frozen Junior. Take a magical journey back to Arendelle and sing along with your favorite characters, Elsa, Anna, and the lovable snowman, Olaf. The show begins Saturday, February 15th and goes through Sunday, February 16th. The performance will take place in the McCain Theater, located on the MCC campus and is suitable for all ages. For tickets, visit our Eagle's Nest bookstore or call 601-484-8650. And we have one of my really good friends and uh, I'm just going to say partner in crime, <laughs> uh, Kelly McKee. And Kelly is uh, in charge of the English lab. Yes. It says English and reading lab, yes. uh, technically, mm -hmm. uh, here on campus. Right. So what do you do in the English lab? Okay, so the English Lab offers free tutoring to any student enrolled in an English class at Meridian Community College, whether it's intermediate English, Comp 1, Comp 2, or even a literature course. And so we offer free tutoring, always with an instructor from the college. Right. 
and also sometimes students want to just come in there and work on papers and things, um, assignments for their English classes so that they'll be in an environment where there's an English instructor present should they have questions as they're working. So if they want to know why does that comma go there, right. you're there to answer right. why that comma mm -hmm. goes there. Mm -hmm. But specifically in our intermediate English classes, which, are, which is a step below the comp one, right. in our intermediate English classes, they come in, they have to, they have to put in an hour a week of lab time. Right. Um, and what's visiting, the purpose of that? Okay, visiting the English lab for an hour each week is a requirement of our intermediate students because we want them to get that foundation of coming regularly to the lab for assistance. Okay. So they come in and they work on anything that their English instructor has assigned, okay. whether it's just a homework assignment or a current paper they're doing. Um, sometimes we'll go over graded papers with them right. so they can kind of see, look at their progress, look and see how they're, how they're doing and where they're headed as far as their grade goes, um, help them understand things that have been marked on their papers. Mm -hmm. But we just, we require that of them and it actually counts as part of their course grade and credit um, just to kind of establish that foundation and hopefully they'll continue to come on their own when they take English comp one and comp two and so forth. And coming to the lab for the intermediate students is 15% of their grade. Yes, it is. You, okay, mm -hmm. so 15% of their grade just to get them in the habit of coming and right. asking questions mm -hmm. and, and knowing where to come and ask right. questions. Mm -hmm. Because I've noticed with uh, when I'm grading papers that sometimes, now there are some, some that need a lot more help than others, True. but sometimes it might just be one issue that they're having with. Right. They don't know this one comma rule. Exactly. And once you explain that, then you know problem exactly. solved essentially. Exactly. Just this morning, I was helping a student, and the main issue with this paper was comma splices. Okay. And some, for an example, you know, um, many of us may not have had a grammar class since right. maybe like the seventh or eighth grade and just entering college, you know, all of that's kind of coming back to you, but maybe you have to review and do. just explain it to him what a comma splice was and how it wasn't just any comma error, but a specific type and how to correct it. Then he knew how to fix his paper. Well, because when you get into some of the upper level classes, a comma splice is worth 10 points. Uh, five or 10 it's points? It's worth five correct? points, five but, points, but some, you know, some errors are 10 points. Right. And if a student hasn't heard what a um, past participle is or a sentence fragment in several years, right. they say, whoa, I need to know what that is to, to know how to avoid well, you know, it. I'm going to say, you know, I, when I was coming through school um, a long, long time ago, um, I knew how to write. Mm -hmm. And I might know that something, there's an error there and I knew how to fix it, but right. I didn't know what it was called. Exactly. And a lot of times that was my, you know, so they would say, you have a pronoun antecedent error. Right. And I had no idea what they were talking right. about. Right. And I was the same way. And um, of course, when I began teaching many years ago, I relearned all of these things and what they were called. And so I understand that sometimes teach, uh, students don't know exactly what those things are. And so that's why they come to the English lab and get a review. And as you said, sometimes they'll come and they'll bring papers that mm -hmm. have been graded so right. we can go over them and so that we can you know, say, okay, this is, these are the problems you had right. so that you don't have those problems moving forward. Exactly. And I encourage anybody who wishes to make use of the English lab to come early in the semester. Once you receive that first graded paper, mm -hmm. um, if you did kind of okay on it, but you'd kind of like to do a little bit better, go ahead and bring it in and let us look at it with you well, so we can kind of help you do better on the next one. It's a one. law of averages. I mean, if you're, if you're writing five essays and you wait until you're, you're on the third one that you right. failed to come in and see us, there, you know, the likelihood <laughs> is you're not going to do well in the class. That's true. Unfortunately. That's true. But if you come on that first paper, and we have quite a few that do come on right. that first paper, they say, I want to know this, and then moving forward, they improve their grade. Because a lot of teachers will, will you know, look at and add points based on them coming in. Sometimes, and seeing yes. Us, mm -hmm. And seeing uh, you in the lab. Right. Do they need to make an appointment to come see you? It's best to make an appointment, especially during a really busy time, like when everybody's research papers are due in the same week. Um, it's not required, okay. but you know we do take. But if they come in and you happen to be busy, 
then you're, they're going to have to come, exactly. unless there's some, another tutor or something right, available, right. It's, they'll have to come another right. time. Right, so we allow walk-ins, and if I'm not helping someone else, I'll be glad to tutor someone on the spot. But it's good to make an appointment, and they can either drop by the lab. It's We're located um, upstairs in Montgomery, um, inside the Student Success Center, yes, as you yes, know. Yes, yes, You moved in this year. We're so, yeah, office She used to be across now. the hall from me, but now she is in there. The lab is inside the Success Center, right. which is wonderful. Yeah. But what are your hours typically? Okay. Um, the English lab is open Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and Friday mornings from 8 to noon. Okay, and the uh, the, the uh, Success Center is open a little bit later right. the Monday through Thursday. We're open from 8 to 6, so if students come in and might need some additional help, right. we uh, sometimes I'm there, sometimes tutors right. are available. But uh, for any student who's thinking about coming back to school mm -hmm. and they're worried about this English and they're like, I never did well in English. Right. I always made D's and F's on I my hear papers. It all the time. <laughs> and so, you know, they should not be scared because help is available to exactly. them. Exactly. So they can come in, they can bring those papers, they can ask those questions. We have a wealth of uh, examples as far as exactly. uh, grammar and punctuation rules. We have mm -hmm. all of this available to them. Right. So there's really no reason not to come in and get that uh, get that assistance and hopefully uh, you know, get that degree that you want to get. Sure, I have handouts, um, worksheets. I can set people up on websites that can help them, whatever their learning style is. And I, I will say this, she is the MLA guru. <laughs> So if someone is writing a research paper and they come to me and because it changes, the rules change. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll go, I, this is how I <laughs> learned it, but I'm not sure. We need to check with Ms. McKee. Uh, you are the person to see. I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to thank you for being with us today. And I do hope you come back. Okay. Thank you. We'll be right back. Find purpose and soar to new heights at Meridian Community College. Elevate your education through our 52 career technical programs and find the eagle in you. With tuition guarantee and university transfer programs, your education is within reach. Find potential with more than 30 campus clubs and organizations and let your eagle spirit thrive. Invest in your education and register today. Meridian Community College, find your wings. Our guest today is uh, Miss Jessie. Beckman, I almost said Bowder, <laughs> because when I first met you, you were Jesse Bowder, mm -hmm. and you were a student here at Meridian Community College, and you were a tutor mm -hmm. in the Student Success Center. Uh, uh, at that time, I was still a, 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 an instructor, I believe. I was not the director of the Student of the Success right. Center, right? And then, so you finished your degree, you left us for many years, and then you returned, mm -hmm. and now you are the Math Emporium Lab Coordinator. That is right. And you were across the hall from me. Right. Are you excited about all this? My favorite place. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you have, have you been in the job a month? It's about a month About now. a month. Okay. So what does your job entail? So we offer a space for the students to come and work on their math homework, okay. whether it be quizzes or tests, you know, basic assignments. Um, and they can get help as they need it. Um, they're required to spend an hour in the math lab okay. per week. Okay. So it's beginning, intermediate, and college algebra. So beginning, math, intermediate algebra, college algebra, those three classes, they must come and spend an hour a week in the math, uh, math Emporium lab. Right, beginning okay. algebra. Hey, pardon me. Intermediate algebra. Pardon me, right. pardon me. Beginning algebra, intermediate algebra, and college algebra. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they must come and spend that time. And within the lab, you, you're in charge of the lab or you're over the lab, right. but you have tutors available. We don't have actual do tutors, okay. but students may raise their hand as they have questions. Which also have something better because don't, don't, don't the math instructors actually? Right. The math okay. instructors are required to spend a certain amount of time each week in the math lab. Okay. And so say their students are having issues and they need that one-on-one -on -one with the instructor themselves, it's really good for them because then they can come to the math lab and raise their hand and the instructor can come help them. And it is Their kind of like tutoring, okay. you know. Um, they can't commit, you know, a certain amount of time to a student, mm -hmm. but they can come help. And, um, you know, there is the math tutoring in the Success Center, right. so 
if they need even even more time, they can go over to the Success Center. Okay. Well, how do you think this the the setting it up like this, where they have the classroom and then they come to the lab? How do you think this is beneficial to your students? I think it helps them because where they might not be inclined to raise their hand in class. I mean, I was one of those students. I'm, I'm not going to raise my hand. Um, but they would be inclined to ask someone to come help them one-on-one. -on -one. I think it helps those students big time. Okay. And also getting more time with the instructor versus just a lecturing class. They mm -hmm. can come to the math lab and it helps them get that time with the instructor if they need it, you know. And also, I think you, you actually show, there are videos, you show videos of the problems being worked. That's right. So the student can watch the problem being worked and then, you know, hopefully work another problem in the same manner. Right. And, and so it, they get that really extra. it's really great the way that they have the videos, because it wasn't like that when I was a student. But it you definitely can log like on. That <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Well, you can log on and just pull up a video of, you know, you can't remember what the instructor said in class. So how did they work it? You can go find the video and see them working it out. And I think that's just wonderful mm -hmm. for the students. Do the students have to make appointments to come for their uh, to uh, for they their uh, do uh, lab not. hour? They can just come whenever we're open. Okay. And what are your hours? We this semester we're open Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from eight to four. Okay. On Tuesdays we're open later until okay. seven okay. for those students who need to come after five. Um, and on Fridays we're open from eight to twelve. Okay. Okay. So a student they can come in, and as long as there's a computer available. Mm -hmm. They can sit down and they can get their lab hour in. Just out of curiosity, here toward the end of the semester, do we have a lot of people running in? It's <laughs> dwindling to... <laughs> down, for sure. I mean, up until, you know, last week, it was packed. Because, okay. you know, they're yes. still, at a certain point, the instructors don't require them to come in anymore right. because they're kind of just reviewing for finals. Um, so it's died down a little bit, but we still have those dedicated students who are coming in and studying for the finals. And they're just, some students have put in three hours in one sitting. I, I, I've, I have a lot of students that will come in. Math is their issue. Anything, mm -hmm. as soon as you say the word math, they are scared out of their wits. And in right. fact, in my study skills class, we talk about math anxiety separate from other other anxiety types wow. because it is just for some reason some people it, clinch up right you know as soon as they and they don't want to and they've even allowed that one class to prevent them from getting a degree because they're right. they're so terrified but we have help for them right they can come and they you know and I tell I tell students all the time you can do this and I'm right. sure you do too, because a lot of times we're the, we have to be the cheerleaders. We do. We have to go in there because they'll come yeah. in and they're just so depressed. They're like, I just, I don't understand this. Quadratic, well, whatever. Right. <laughs> half the battle is them believing they can do it, because I tell them all the time, you can do it if you really believe you can. Mm -hmm. But it's just, that's half the battle. You know? How was the transition from being a math tutor to being now you're in charge of the lab. Was it interesting coming back? It was very interesting. I was so excited because I loved tutoring. I did it for five years. Yes, while you were finishing your degree uh, at uh, uh, across the street at yeah, MSU mm -hmm. Meridian. And so whenever I saw this job posting, I was like, wow, that's just right up my alley. And it felt like it was meant to be, yes. you know. So I've thoroughly enjoyed helping students. You know. Has it been kind of what you expected? Yes, and okay. more. Okay. I mean, it's wonderful getting to see the students and you kind of build relationships with them. Mm -hmm. And you have those ones that are more timid and you know you should go over and check in on them. And they appreciate it. And you it's know. the best feeling in the world when you see someone who has worked so hard and they get that, they, they get it. And it they, is. they do well. It's just such a great feeling. It is. And we're able to help them with that beginning algebra or intermediate algebra or college right. algebra. If, if a student had trouble in a higher level, might they come in to get a little assistance or no? It depends on who's in the lab, okay. really. Okay. Um, the instructors who teach, like trigonometry or calculus, 
they would be happy to help. Okay. Um, I would, I would just suggest that the student reach out to his or her instructor. Okay. Because a lot of times they will set aside some time to meet with the student if yes, they, they need do. the extra help. Um, but you know, it just depends on which instructor is in the lab that day if they'd be able to help. Well, now, uh, what is the phone number for the lab? It is, I believe, we have it. Yes, it is 601-481-1377. Pulled it right out of your <laughs> the most seven, seven. Say that again, please. 601-481-1377. <laughs> I'm so thrilled that you are now part of our family Me here. Too. And I do, I, I want you to come back on the show. I will, for sure. Okay, we'll be right back. Meridian Community College Arts and Letters Series is proud to present Frozen Junior. Take a magical journey back to Arendelle and sing along with your favorite characters, Elsa, Anna, and the lovable snowman, Olaf. The show begins Saturday, February 15th and goes through Sunday, February 16th. The performance will take place in the McCain Theater, located on the MCC campus and is suitable for all ages. For tickets, visit our Eagle's Nest bookstore or call 601-484-8650. Thank you for watching. On behalf of Matt Milner, the executive producer, Josh Taylor, media consultant, we hope you had a good time and you learned a little bit.